Rise from your grave. If you like this video and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thank you. Altered Beast was one of the first arcade games you could experience at home. What do you get when you mix up Michael Jackson's Thriller, the movie The Howling, and classic Sega arcade gameplay? You get another classic Sega arcade coin op. In the game, the Beast comes out every so often to feast. Its ferocity is unmatched, so you best beware. No, I'm not talking about my ex-wife. I'm talking about Altered Beast, the classic Sega arcade coin-op. What famous movie poster ripped off the artwork for Altered Beast? So let's take a look at the Fury of the Furries. This is the history of Altered Beast. The year is 1988 and Makoto Uchida has just started a Sega and has plenty of ideas for his next arcade game. Taking inspiration from Greek mythology as well as classic American monster movies such as The Mummy and The Werewolf mixed in with a little bit of Michael Jackson's Thriller and you come up with a perfect recipe for Altered Beast. Altered Beast opens up with Zeus resurrecting two fallen warriors. They are ordered by the ruler of Mount Olympus to rescue his daughter Athena from the demon god Neph. Rise from your grave. The gameplay consists of five levels of beat em up action, which sees you transform into various creatures as you try to take on Neph. When you face Neff at the end of each stage, he will transform into a different monster. However, on each stage, you will be able to transform as well. At various times on each stage, you will notice a white two-headed wolf. Upon killing it, you will collect a spirit ball and you will power up. Collect all three spirit balls and you will transform into various creatures. The animals you can transform into are wolves dragons, tigers, and bears. Oh my. On stage five, you are transformed into a golden wolf, which is very similar to the one found in the first level, only this time much more powerful. One of the most memorable aspects of the game are the beast transformation scenes. Mr. Uchida has stated in interviews that he had one of his artists spend an entire month designing all of these. The five stages in the game are Graveyard, Cave, Underground Cavern, Netherworld Fortress, and Netherworld Sanctum. After each stage, a cutscene is shown to progress the story. After you complete the game, a very weird ending is shown. It appears they were all just making a movie. However, to hear Mr. Uchida describe it, it all makes perfect sense. He looks at game development as if he were making a movie, so he wanted to include that in the game. After a long and successful night of programming, he and his colleagues would go out for a celebratory beer. If there is one criticism this game has is that it doesn't have a whole lot of depth. Mr. Uchida recalls that he wanted to include pressure sensitive buttons but it was scrapped in the later stages of development. What this means is, a lot of the moves that were going to be included had to be scrapped. So you were limited to just punching, kicking and jumping. This game was designed from the ground up to be the quintessential quarter muncher. Now was it a success in that regard? Oh yes! The arcade game runs on the system 16 board hardware which was host to a wide variety of arcade games such as Alien Syndrome Shinobi Hey! Hey! Ooh. 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 
Fantasy Zone. And Golden Axe. The Cockatrice makes his debut as one of the enemies in this game. The next game, it appears, is Golden Axe, where apparently it's had a change of heart because now it's a writable character. If you look closely in the background, you'll see the agonizing face from 1893's famous painting, The Scream. And speaking of the backgrounds, if you're on the graveyard scene, take a close look at the tombstones. There is one that says Stella and one that says Alex. Alex Kidd was Sega's first mascot long before Sonic came along. Alex Kidd actually starred in six games across three different platforms. This is a bit of foreshadowing by Sega. Because three years later, Sonic the Hedgehog would be released and bury Alex Kidd for good. Now let's talk about those conversions. Let me just start off by saying we have some good, some bad, and some downright stinkers. The first version we are looking at is a Sega Genesis or Mega Drive version. One thing the Sega Genesis version had that the arcade version did not was parallax scrolling. Just look at those multi-tiered background scroll. Yummy! Due to it being the original pack-in for Sega's 16-bit system, the popularity of this game soared. Looking very close to its arcade counterpart, this shows what a 16-bit powerhouse could do. The difficulty was increased just a bit, but it played exactly like the arcade game and that's what counts. We go from the highest of the highs to the lowest of the lows, and looking at this, you can't go any lower. There are some games that shouldn't be converted, and this is one of those games. With a frame rate that never manages to break double digits, I've seen better animation in a flipbook, but at least it's nice and colorful. How is the playability, you ask? Non-existent. Up next is the Atari ST version. While not bad, it's not very good either. Most of the home computer ports have a status bar at the very bottom of the screen which I assume was to help with the speed of the scrolling. The controls are sluggish and the hit detection is a bit iffy. The colors are muted and so are the sound effects and music. On second thought, maybe this is a bad conversion. Up next is the PC Engine version, and while it's a good attempt, it doesn't come anywhere close to the quality of the Mega Drive version. First off, all of the voices are missing and the music is a bit iffy. They did, however, release a CD version which featured all of the voices, all of the music, and even cutscenes. The playability on this port is only average at best. <laughs> Next up is the Famicom release of Altered Beast. Take a quick gander at this game for a few seconds and take a guess as to why this game was Japanese only. Ding 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 ding. That's right, the game was so horrible they couldn't release it in North America or Europe. I haven't seen anything this small since I went to the bathroom. To be fair though, it does play pretty well for an 8-bit Famicom game and the speed is pretty consistent with the arcade game. Sticking with the 8-bits is the Sega Master System version. 
while graphically superior to the Famicom version, speed-wise and control-wise, it definitely is not. The sound effects and music are pretty good. The third level is missing entirely, and so is the beast transformation. Up next is the favorite computer of my youth, the Amiga 500 version. While it is a bit on the slow side compared to the Atari ST version, the music and sound effects are nice, even retaining a lot of the voices from the original arcade game. The controls are nice, even with only one fire button. Up next is the MSX version, and I really wish it wasn't. For those of you who don't know, the MSX was a little seen computer and frankly, I wish I'd seen even less of it. Holy moly is this game slow. You can count the colors on one hand, that is if you had fingers. The controls are sluggish and unresponsive, but hey, at least there's a nice jingle playing in the background. Rusty, but perhaps rusty, Commodore 64 version is up next. This is the best of the 8-bit computer ports, but that's not saying very much. The controls are nice and responsive, and the speed of the gameplay is very close to the arcade game. While the graphics are a decent size, the colors are dull and dreary. We do get some excellent music thanks to the Commodore 64 SID chip. The Specky port closes out the 8-bit computer ports with a pretty good conversion. Yes, there's a bit of color clash going on, but it is fast and plays like Altered Beast, even with only one fire button. The speed of the game is pretty consistent with its arcade big brother. Finally, the last one we are looking at is the MS-DOS version. This one was developed by DSi, whereas all of the other versions were done by Activision, and it really shows. The first thing you notice that is missing is the giant status bar at the bottom. Also, we get large detailed sprites, pretty good music, and the only version to feature full screen beast transformations. The playability is very good. There's one thing I can say about all of the home conversions is they had awesome box art. Just take a look. In 2002, THQ acquired the rights to Altered Beast and released the first follow-up. This was scheduled to be released for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and Game Boy Advance. But only the Game Boy Advance version was released. Guardians of the Realms takes place across 15 levels. Yes, that's right, over three times as many levels as the original. This time around, you have brand new beasts and brand new environments. The beasts you can transform into are werewolf, snakes, dragons, tigers, turtles, sharks, rhinos, eagles, and scorpions. The game feels more like Altered Beast 1.5 as opposed to a full-on sequel. The graphics have had a massive overhaul and are really well done. The game is still fun to play, but it's just way too long. That's what she said.
in 2005, Altered Beast finally entered the third dimension. Known as Project Altered Beast in Japan or simply Altered Beast in Europe, it was never released here in North America. This was developed by the same team that brought you the original Altered Beast, so you would think this would be a slam dunk, right? Well, yes and no. Since this is essentially a reboot, the Greek setting is gone and the game takes place in modern times. Your name in the game is Luke Custer, a genome cyborg who survived a helicopter crash but loses his memory. He sets out on a mission to rediscover his past. The graphics are really well done and there's plenty of blood and gore just like any good monster game should have. The controls are nice and tight, but the problem with the gameplay is that it's very repetitive. The average review score across the board was 50%, which is why it was not released in North America. Still though, the game is fun to play in short bursts. The beast transformations are epic, and the ones you can transform into are... Merman, Garuda, Wendigo, a Minotaur, and a Dragon. After you complete the game, a number of other forms are unlocked, including a white were tiger, a grizzly bear, and an alien clone. I've seen this game selling for between five and ten dollars at thrift shops, so if you're as big a fan of Alter Beast as I am, pick it up. You just might like it. So what about Alter Beast in the modern times? In 2012. Wreck-It Ralph was released with a multitude of video game cameos and Altered Beast was no exception. In the bad guy support group sitting on the left hand side of the screen, you can see Neff sitting there in his rhinoceros persona. In 2013, the game was released for the 3DS. This was a port of the Mega Drive system but offered two player simultaneous play. This added a few new features such as random beast transformations. This was a good port, but I don't understand why they didn't just convert the arcade original. In 2017, Marvel Studios was <clears throat> inspired by the artwork for Altered Beast. Take a look at the artwork on the left and the movie poster for Thor Ragnarok on the right and let me know if you see any similarities. Since the retro gaming scene has seen a resurgence, they are producing brand new merchandise including toys, Funko figures, t-shirts, and even coffee mugs. The game is also available on Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, and the Nintendo eShop. In 2019, a fan-made reimagining of Altered Beast was released. The game featured three new modes of play, all new enemy sprites, and new power-ups for your beast. The game is available for Android, Mac OS, Play Online Direct, Windows, and Linux. It's a fantastic little game and any fan of Altered Beast should check it out. And that brings us to the end of the history of Altered Beast. It's a great little beat-em-up, while not as polished as Golden Axe, it's still a lot of fun to play. Let me know in the comments down below if you liked or disliked this video. Happy or mad, glad or sad, I want to hear from you. If you like this video and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my channel can grow. Thank you so much for watching.